पी गए मंडे के ओए। Every bandit must be brought to book. The Suguta Valley is one of the low areas of land between ranges of hills in Kenya's Rift Valley. It appears bare with trees dotting a dry river bed that runs through it. But this land is not as bare as it seems. The valley provides cover for a group of bandits that have been wreaking havoc across the North Rift region. It is just one of the places bandits hide. Well, indeed, this area is just harsh. As you can see, it's a harsh environment. In the last few weeks, Kenyan soldiers have been hunting these criminal gangs, following a directive by the commander-in-chief. Every bandit must be brought to book. Every illegal gun surrendered willingly or by force. And the army have not shied away from displaying the heavy weaponry they have tugged along in the hunt. Armored personnel carriers mounting and self-propelled artilleries and general purpose machine guns. During military operations, an artillery has four core missions. Fire! Suppression of the enemy fires or counter battery fires. Striking high value targets. Breaking up enemy force concentrations and providing fire support for maneuver warfare. A general purpose machine gun is termed as the world's deadliest gun. The dangerously misguided idea that people can acquire illegal arms, mobilize to commit murder, robbery, violence, and other criminal acts, and in the process displace, torment, cause suffering, and insecurity to peaceful communities must and will come to an end. The existence of bandits is not an abstract notion in the Kenyan North. They disguise themselves as cattle rustlers, hey. wreaking havoc and inflicting huge amounts of dread. They operate in secrecy and have military-like ranks. Their intelligence collection can rival that of any organized force, and most of them ignorant young men, as Professor Kithure Kindiki, Kenya's cabinet secretary for interior, alludes. They continue engaging in vain antics and maneuvers aimed at demonstrating their invincibility and endurance. To these criminals, they have done the same antics and maneuvers in the past, without any consequences. They have done so in the past without any success of stopping them. The ragtag militia is turning the counties of Trukana, West Pokot, Elge Marakwet, Baringo, Samburu and Laikipia into valleys of death. During the last six months, a hundred civilians and 16 police officers have been killed. An average of one person every two days is what is becoming Kenya's biggest internal security problem. The situation 
called for action. The Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces instructed his soldiers to unleash hell on bandits. We will be decisive in stamping out banditry and neutralizing every bandit who denies or who defies the government and attempts any illegal or criminal acts. KDF forces were sent in to help police officers deal with bandits three weeks ago. But the bandits' weapons have not been silenced and they have grown even more audacious. They ambushed a KDF convoy in Kainuk before they were outdone by the soldiers. Oi. By trying to demonstrate that they can disrupt an ongoing operation and that they can withstand our firepower, these thugs have invited the government to take the war to their hideouts in remote forests, caves, ravines, gorges, and escarpments. But what breeds these hardcore criminals? They all start as cattle rustlers. A practice that is usually considered cultural here. In the past, warriors would wield crude weapons such as spears, swords, and bows and arrows to steal livestock, but they rarely killed people. <laughs> livestock is a symbol of wealth, and stealing cattle was considered a means to elevate one's status. But in the past few decades, cattle raids have escalated, fueled by the proliferation of small arms smuggled into the country. In recent years, the raids have grown deadly, with a sharp rise in the number of people killed during attacks. Gangs of gunslinging raiders usually storm villages at night, shooting people on sight before driving away entire herds of cattle, sheep and goats, leaving entire communities devastated. Now this is how bandits are made. At a tender age, young boys with no formal education begin to play with the gun in the jungle, quite literally. They are taught how to use it and engage the enemy. Information gathering is the next stage. A bandit is a top spy in his own way. They must learn as much as they can about the targeted community or people, the quantity of animals or livestock they keep, the community's defense capabilities, and most crucially, how to overwhelm them and flee before conducting a raid. A member of the anti-stock theft unit based in Baringo tells me that bandits use military-like maneuvers while conducting raids and driving away stolen livestock. They move in groups, the scanners, those who push the livestock, the snipers who usually position themselves on raised grounds. 
and the repellers whose job is to force back any recovery team after them. Over 135 people, innocent Kenyans, including 20 security officers, have lost their lives as a result of murders committed by marauding bandits. But what makes them deadly? One has to do with the harsh terrain they operate in and their early lives. Despite the inclement weather and the difficult terrain, they had animals hundreds of kilometers in search of pasture and water. They become resilient as a result and acclimate to life in the jungle. They stay away from home for several months, especially during drought seasons. Senior herders teach younger herders how to wield weapons and the rules of the battlefield during these times, just in case the feared enemy attacked. A juvenile herder quickly develops into a skilled shooter. From an early age, they learn to camouflage on the rocks in the dry river beds where they ambush vehicles once they slow down. One thing about these areas is that they are harsh. It is a harsh environment as you can see. And for anyone training to be a military officer or training to be, uh, let's say, a security officer, it is as harsh as it can be. If you want to understand just how harsh this area is, British soldiers come to Kenya and in these areas to train for them to become global soldiers. So Scurry Storm is a, an exercise that we run two to three times a year to train uh, British soldiers to, uh, to, to fight in challenging environments, which is what Archer's Post provide. It's, uh, it's a really challenging, it's hot, it's, uh, it's you know, difficult terrain, so it, it, there's no better place to train our British soldiers. Then the many valleys in the North Rift, bandits hide here. Chasing them down into the valley is a proverbial equivalent to a death trap as it was during the Baragoy massacre. 42 police officers were killed as they attempted to recover stolen cattle in the Suguta Valley. The same script played out in 2014 in Capedo. 21 police officers lost their lives as they drove into an ambush in Kasaran Valley, a few kilometers from Capedo. The military has the ability of using artillery. Field artillery guns and rocket launchers can bring massive firepower to bear and allow troops freedom to operate without or with little interference from bandits. Aiming either to suppress or neutralize the bandits or to cause casualties, damage and destruction. But in the valleys of Kenya's North Rift, KDF's artillery team is not having it easy. These bandits are not just holed up in the escarpments and gorges alone, but they have invited people who appear to be unarmed civilians and whom we suspect are members of their families, including women and children. It is our conclusion that they have decided 
to live with these people whom we suspect are their kin as human shield in the event, as it is likely, of an engagement with security forces. When bandits or cattle rustlers steal livestock, this is where they hide and graze them as they await transportation to destination. According to the government, there are people who buy livestock from bandits and transport them to cities and towns like Nairobi for sale. The Ministry of Interior is terming it as commercialization of cattle rustling. We have conclusively established and zeroed on the key suspects in terms of those who have been commanding the terror gangs in this area. We have their names, we have their profiles, and we are going for them. We have also identified the spiritual leaders who have been given blessings to raiders and murderers before they go to commit their crimes. As we speak, one of them is in custody. Although villagers know where bandits are, they often fear speaking up. They worry about reprisals. In the process, the government aims to take guns away from the people. In this region, guns are brandished by almost everyone. Locals claim it is the only protection they trust. We have made our commitment to end cattle rustling, banditry, and other criminal activities in every part of Kenya. I am absolutely confident that we can rely on the KDF and our security system to secure the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Kenya as mandated in the Constitution without any difficulty whatsoever. Experts argue that securing the north of Kenya will take more than just disarmament. My name is Anoxicolio, and this is the Kenyan historian.